To be a safety leader, you have to be not only better at the job than the others, but willing to pick yourself up when you stumble. Coming up, three reasons safety leaders stumble. People work, the human touch in workplace safety. Available everywhere on Amazon. To learn more, go to kevburns.com slash peoplework. The best organizations give world-class safety performance. They don't do it with a mediocre effort, mediocre standards, or mediocre supervisors and safety people. They do it by surpassing industry average targets, a focused engagement with employees and with safety people and supervisors on top of their game. Those companies search out and employ the supervisors and managers who set a higher standard for themselves. They seek out those who want to inspire their own crews to be better, to reach farther, to achieve at a higher level. You don't build championship teams by shooting for middle of the industry averages. You don't instill a positive safety culture by settling for average performance. To lead, you have to do not just what others are not doing, but by doing what they're not even prepared to do. World-class safety is driven by wanting higher standards. Higher standards drive greater effort, and greater effort is driven by higher performing safety people and supervisors. World-class safety is not achieved by a mediocre effort, standards, or people who don't seek to be exceptional. Without exceptional people and standards, you're shooting for mediocrity. You'll become world-class only by luck. Here's the problem. Not every safety person is a high performer. Like every other industry and profession, there are below average and average performers, and then there's the top echelon, the elite, the leaders. Which of those sounds like you? How about a short self-assessment? Here are three main reasons that many stumble in their pursuit of becoming safety leaders. Number one, they're satisfied with mediocrity. Well, I mean, not outwardly, of course. No, they'll say they have high expectations. But when the target's to achieve the industry average, they're shooting for middle of the pack. That's not leadership. To hit the industry average takes only a few small tweaks and adjustments to the safety plan. It's easy. In fact, you could probably copy another company's safety plan and come close to the average. Once we are within the average, there's little motivation to seek beyond that. See, mediocrity takes over. This is where good enough lives. And unfortunately, once you hit the industry average, complacency usually follows. If you're not growing, you're falling behind. And leaders grow. Stumble number one, they're satisfied with mediocrity. Stumble number two, they believe that someone else should pay to make them better. See, the company will train you to a level of competence. Excellence, though, is a personal choice beyond that. You'll be paid in direct proportion to what the market believes that you're worth. You'll be recruited and hired and laid off in direct proportion to what the market believes that you are worth. You've got to make a personal investment in yourself. Improve your management skills, your business acumen, and your leadership ability. Otherwise, you'll be picked for the mediocre positions. Leaders, meanwhile, get hired for the elite positions. Leaders get the ear of senior management, they become trusted advisors, they bring a new perspective to the job. It's a mix of safety knowledge, leadership, business, and personal traits that shout expert. Invest in yourself and pay your own way into the elite performer category. Stumble number two, they believe that someone else should pay to make them better. In stumble number three, they lack the skills and the confidence to get personal. Mediocre performers rely on cerebral traits. The management style is primarily focused on rules and process, procedure. Safety meetings focus on reports and paperwork and inspections. Little effort is spent on appealing to employee engagement or motivation, not because they don't want to, but because they simply lack the skills. It's difficult for anyone who lacks coaching and, and motivation skills to create a team of high performers. Employees are not inspired by PowerPoint slides of inspection reports, nor does guilt inspire. I'm talking about, you know, the things when you say there's a family waiting for you at home, those kinds of things. Guilt gets compliance, the bare minimum. 
but to achieve high performance requires a different set of skills. Your employer will not furnish you with these skills. You'll have to get them on your own, and you'll be better, more valuable as a result. So stumble number three, they lack the skills and confidence to get personal. See, safety leaders treat their careers like professional athletes do. They hone their skills, they attend the conferences, they read the books, they go outside for resources that help. That includes more leadership skills, management training, and communications classes and books. They'll take it personally when the company misses their targets. To surpass the current industry leaders, you have to up your game. You have to be better than the other 99% of safety people and supervisors. Membership in the top 1% requires two things, commitment, and personal investment. Your results change dramatically when you choose to become a safety leader. And when you do, you'll take your team along with you.